So we, we hit on four key areas. One, we started, you know, way back. We thought back to, you know, what are things that we did at planting this year that made a big difference? And a lot of that ties back into nutrition, especially with the planters. Some, some starter fertilizers. We've got our ends up zinc and ends up PDS supplying zinc, phosphorus, and some enzymes to that, to that in that furrow at planting. It, you know, we're, we're planting early in, into cool soils. A lot of that zinc and phosphorus hasn't mineralized yet, typically, even though we have high organic matter here in these soils so we get a good growth response out of that but then we're also providing enzymes which feed the bacteria and get that microbiome going earlier in the season and so then beyond starters we're also looking at technologies that go into the planter box so talc based products and using talc as a carrier for some of these enzymes zinc biologicals to apply directly on the seed are there things that worked out better than you thought they might or some that didn't work out quite as well as you'd hoped? Yeah, seeing really good responses to uh, zinc and phosphorus this year early season and sulfur was a big one. Zinc, so phosphorus, sulfur and nitrogen were both all four of those very responsive this year. Is that because weather was conducive? Yeah, we were planting and uh, we planted early. We started our first planting date went in on March 30th and then uh, we came back in about April 10th and continued planting the rest of our crop. And, uh, you know, soils were a little cooler at that time. And that's pretty typical that when we're planting early, we get a better response out of the, some of the nutritionals that we're pl uh, providing at planting. Okay. So that could be a, a recommendation you would have to farmers to mm -hmm. mark down on a cool soil, yep. you might want to hit nutrition a little harder. Yep, that's exactly right. You know, you haven't jump-started that mineralization process when you have those cooler soils early season. Nutrition was one. Yep. What's, what's number so two? two of the stops, they're similar, but one was on corn, the other one was on soybean. We're talking about high yield corn and soybean environment and how full your nutrition plays into that. So we're at a point now where the yield is made. You know, the, the yield potential is set. We're just we're trying to protect the yield that we have and assist that plant to move sugars and photosimilates into the developing grain. And so we're looking at fungicides, nutritions like Brant Smart KB, which has potassium and boron. Those, those elements, potassium and boron, are really important for sugar movement in the plant. So we're combining that with our fungicide application and showing some responses that we had to that. Okay. We've got rows around. We've got the number of kernels we're going to have. Yep. We just got to make them bigger. Yep. It's all about kernel weight at this point in time. And so moving sugar into those that's what's going to really increase the yep. yield. Yep, that's exactly right. So, you know, the sugar and the nutrients that we're bringing in right now, it's either going to come from something that's already stored in the plant or we can extend photosynthetic capacity later into the season through grain fill through those fungicides and have current assimilation later into the growing season and then we have to assist that plant in moving those sugars into the gr growing kernels. Those fungicides you talked about, I'm assuming no tar spot at this point yet? No, nope, we haven't had tar spot out here yet at, at the at the research farm I have seen I've heard some areas I think I saw in Nebraska this morning on Twitter that there's some tar spots showing up um, you know and the fungicides that we're using they're really they're preventative fungicides they don't correct an issue that's already there if you you know have already shown symptomology so in a lot of scenarios out here we've gotten really good responses to a double pass program so we'll come in with fungicide prior to tassel and then we'll hit it again we'll try to get overlap of those residual fungicides right at that R2 growth stage when we're beginning grain fill. Okay. And on soybeans you're putting fungicide on soybeans? Too? Yep, we're hitting we're hitting fungicide on soybeans at R three growth stage. That tends to be the point in time where you have the maximum amount of trifoliates exposed to the canopy. But even as you get into that grain, you know, the, that pod fill, fill stage, you get into R four, R five, um, you know, a, a second pass could be warranted depending on insect pressure, especially with some of those insects that feed on pods like stink bugs or uh, bean leaf beetles. Okay. All right. Nutrition? Fungicide for protection? Yeah, we talked about corn and soybeans, and then our last stop was on uh, new traits in the bear pipeline. We had a representative uh, from, from bear out here. We were talking about, you know, new uh, traits in commercial germplasm for rootworm protection and above ground protection. And then he also hit on kind of the latest on short statured corn and where they're at in the, uh, the development of it. I know you are almost an expert on short statured corn. That yep. was what a lot of your PhD was on. Right. What did, did you hear anything new from what you already knew? You know, I I, I, I didn't get the privilege of listening to the talk because I was presenting too. But you know, I have a I have a pretty big study out here on short corn this year. We're looking at planting density, row spacing, and in season foliar management. You know, the, that shorter stature allows for extended in season access to that crop, so we can get across that crop later in the season with ground 
equipment to apply foliar nutrition or fungicides. And then we're also looking at population and row spacing because, because that crop is shorter, it's putting less energy into that stock growth. It's putting more energy into that nodal root system. It has better standability. So it, it'll handle a higher population when we get more ears per acre. And we've seen that that's really where the big yield advantage with the short shatter corn is. Okay. And, um, and at least the genetics are there that uh, are going to provide yield as well as structural capacity in the stock. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this shorter stature, they, it has quite a bit better standability and that ability to plant higher densities. That's where the real yield advantage comes from. And it's also protecting, um, you know, crop loss due to high wind events.